So now that we're comfortable with X chromosomes and Y chromosomes and sex chromosomes of all sorts, we understand the relationships that we see between them, how somebody's male, how somebody's female, the sort of unfairness seen in maleness um, because of that lack of another X to mask anything else. I want to finish off sex chromosomes by entitling this next flowchart flow Sex Chromosomes 3. And I want to address some of the, let's say, unfair qualities that you might think have been, that you might have been thinking of as a result of the X and Y, um, let's say, uh, arrangement of males. Is there an unfairness? There is an unfairness, and we're going to talk about it, and how nature, specifically biology, addresses that unfairness. This unfairness that we, you might have been thinking about, is addressed by something known as X in, in X inactivation in females. This is a female specific event. It's very, very interesting. Okay? So what we're, we're going to do is through X in, inactivation, keep this in the back of your head. This is going to be something that prevents uh, prevents having two times or double X produced genes as compared to who? Who wouldn't have the double? Males. As compared to males. This is something known as dosage compensation. You don't need to know that actual term, but I think it's important so that you get an idea of what it means. It makes sense, dosage compensation. Now, this is going to make a lot more sense as we go through this. So, some uh, sort of background information that you should already know is that females have two copies, okay, they have two copies um, of every X allele, X associated allele, let's say. Whereas males only have one. Why is that? Because you have X with an allele up here, let's just denote it by uh, just a regular underscore X with another allele associated here, and X underscore Y. So there's something that can be here, and there's two things that can be here. There are two blank spaces here, and only one blank space here. This is weird. Females have two copies of every X allele. Males only have one. This makes you think, or hopefully it makes you think, that um, is this unfair? This is weird. You know, is there two times as many gene products? That's a good way to say this. Are there double the gene products in females as there are in males? No, because of dosage compensation. Let's walk through it right now. X inactivation. You should already be understanding what's going to happen to one of these X's, X chromosomes. So we're going to state that in females, we're going to make some claims right now. In females, dot, dot, dot. A couple of statements you should understand. In females, specifically during what is known as embryonic development, you should understand what embryonic development is from way back in lecture one. During embryonic development, development um, in the womb, let's say. During embryonic development, one X chromosome in each cell is inactivated. Oh, big, big deal right here. It's a huge deal because this literally tells us the title of the subtitle of our flowchart. During embryonic development, one X chromosome in each, let's say, I forgot to say this, in each, if you can put over here cell, real tight over here, in each cell is inactivated. And this is referred to, this inactivated X chromosome in every single female cell is referred to as a bar body. Named after the scientist who discovered this really interesting characteristic of females. What we're also going to state is that in females, one, because of this inactivation, one X chromo doesn't do what? Doesn't, look up here, doesn't. That premise that we had is wrong. Doesn't express its allele. So look, you have two X's. Somehow, some way, during embryonic development, this is actually through a gene, X inactivation is going to happen where this is going to be irrelevant. It's not going to express its allele. Okay? We're going to see how that's distributed 
um, in females in just a second. And lastly, in females, functionally speaking, when we ever, whenever we say functionally, we mean on a macro scale, on a large scale. Functionally, females are also hemizygous. Females are hemizygous, just like their male counterparts. But now you might be thinking, well, if females are hemizygous, then why don't they ever um, have that issue of not masking uh, bad alleles, let's say? How come females can mask colorblindness? Well, it's very interesting because what we're going to state um, a little bit later, actually, is something uh, in result of the, it's a result of the inactivation process itself. Just know this for right now. I want to cover a bit more about the bar body before I get into that answer to that uh, dying question that many of you probably have. The bar body itself um, is very dense, very dense, um, and it's uh, easily stained. Why do you need to know this? Because it is actually in the form of what we call heterochromatin. Heterochromatin is actually chromatin that is... Actually, let's not even worry about heterochromatin. I'm not going to write that, actually. Just know that uh, bar body is a very dense structure. Very, very dense structure. And it actually lies alongside the nuclear envelope. Lies alongside nuclear envelope. Just to give you an idea of where it is. Look at your textbook for an image of that. It's very interesting. So if you have a bar body, you're going to have, so imagine this is our bar body. Look how dense it is. I actually did that on purpose. This is a very dense bar body. Next to it you have an active X. Let's call this active X right over here. The active X, because it did not get inactivated in this situation, the active X is actually in what is called a chromatin state. It's in a real chromatin state, a true chromatin state mostly. As opposed to this dense state, okay? This dense state actually is what's going to cause, and you don't need to know this, the fact that nothing on this chromosome is going to be expressed. None of the genes are going to be expressed because it's so densely packed together, it's very hard to access any of these genes. Whereas over here, nice and open to access any of the genes, okay? Chromatin state mostly, this increases, let's say, access to gene, thus increases expression of gene. And now lastly, what we're going to talk about is the inactivation process. This should answer many of your questions as to how this happens. Oops, let's get that out of the way. Inactivation process. This is how X inactivation happens. What you have, and I've alluded to this, are DNA and histone modifications. Way back when, when we talked about DNA and we talked about chromatin, in mitosis, I believe, we stated that chromatin is found wrapped around histones, okay? DNA is wrapped around histones. A bunch of histones gives us nucleosomes. You can go back to our mitosis lecture. There's a video that explains that. What we're going to do in order to inactivate this guy, the one that I just scribbled over and caused this scribbling, let's say, caused this density to form, is we're going to modify the DNA and the histones associated with that DNA. One major way of modification is known as methylation. This might be a new term to you. It's a way of gene regulation. Methylation is defined as the process in which we're going to add methyl groups, add methyls. Do you guys remember what methyls were? Methyls is we're just going to add a bunch of these CH3s. I'm drawing a bunch of CH3s, so I'm methylating this. Oops, let me just put that back right there. Right over there. Okay, that should be good. Uh, we're adding a bunch of CH3s and some CH3s over here as well. So, we're methylating it. Adds methyls to DNA. Big deal. Why should you care? You should care because this actually stops gene expression. Ask yourself, why do I need to stop gene expression? Because I need to inactivate something. I need to inactivate the X. If I put a bunch of CH3s all over the X's DNA, the one that I want to inactivate, the one that I want to make into a densely packed bar body, look, I'm increasing the density by putting a bunch of methyls on there. And I'm going to actually do some histone modifications. Uh, specifically, I believe it's acetylation. or de Don't even worry about what the histones happens. Just know that methylation is the process that's stopping gene expression. Now, you might be wondering that question that I asked. How come females then don't have the problem of males in the sense that one thing doesn't get to mask the other? Because this inactivation process 
is a very random process. So random, you'll understand by the example. Every single female, let's, let's imagine we have a heterozygous female, okay? And I'm going to draw and heterozygous, denote a heterozygous female by stating that it's X capital A and X what? Lowercase a. That's a heterozygous female. XX means female, heterozygous, different uh, alleles, A and A. What's going to happen is, randomly, randomly, what's going to happen is that some cells will express X lowercase a, and what's going to happen to the other ones? Some cells will express X capital A. This is a random process, okay? And this means that whenever you do a cross, let's say, of a heterozygous female, and you're wondering, okay, how come one of them is not masking the other if we have this bar body situation? Because there's a randomness involved. In that cross, there's a 50-50 chance that you have the XA expressed or the X capital A expressed. Thus, you don't have to worry about anything when you're doing a Punnett square. This will make sense if you go back to the Punnett square we did in the previous video and notice that I did exactly this with the color blindness, X capital C and X lowercase c. There's a 50-50 chance of both, and I exemplified that by doing the cross as if there was a 50-50 chance of both. A random chance of either expressing the recessive or the um, dominant allele in this situation. A is just anything, okay? Just imagine that A is dominant to lowercase a. Um, a very interesting example that I really like is the fact that if you, whenever you look at something known as a tortoise shell cat, Tortoise shell cats provide a great example because anytime you see a mosaic cat, I want you to Google this, mosaic tortoise shell cat, you're going to see splotches of color here and there. You might see some orange, some uh, darker fur, you might see some lighter fur. You've probably seen these cats before. Realize that every single one, most of the time, about 99% of the time, let's say, of the tortoise shell cats that have this mosaic pattern, in their fur, Google that, mosaic pattern cat. You're going to notice that they're always female. Why? Because some of the cells in that mosaic cat will express the pigment, fur pigment of orange. Some of the cells in that, in that mosaic cat will express the pigment of gray. Some will express the pigment of dark fur and light fur, etc. This is why you have a mosaic of colors. That's why you have a tortoise shell cat that's almost always 99% of the time female. So overall, hopefully now you understand that the sex chromosomes have a way of combating this unfairness through X inactivation, which results in one active X and one bar body through, this all happens before birth even, during embryonic development, and this inactivation process involves methylation, it's random, it prevents, look at this definition again, the doubling of X-produced gene products as compared to females, because what do we do? We cut this in half. Some express lowercase, some express uppercase, thus we have dosage compensation.